Hello and welcome. My name is Don Moore and I invite you to participate with me through your imagination and the retelling of the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus. Now we've all heard that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Israel. Uh, we're familiar with the nativity scene. There's uh, the barn or maybe even a cave sometimes. Uh, there's animals. There's a feed trough that uh, we know as the manger. There uh, are the wise men. There's Joseph, of course. And he's hovering and watching over Mary and the baby Jesus. But somehow, the reality of it all still seems to elude us at times. We've kind of made it into a fairy tale. And it seems like it happened so long ago and so far away that uh, we have a hard time making it our own. So today, I would like to change the scenery from two perspectives. The first is, as a man, I've never experienced the joys of childbirth. And while Mary certainly was the central figure doing all the labor, Joseph was a real man with real feelings. They're experiencing with his wife the birth of their first child, their oldest son. Now secondly, while I'm not real familiar with Israel, and a lot of us haven't gotten to visit Israel yet, I'm real familiar with Texas because this is where I was born and raised. Now Texas may be almost as foreign to you as Israel, but I'm hoping that by changing the scenery, we can make the story of the birth of Jesus feel a little bit closer to home and a little bit more real for us. Now one other thing I want to mention is that why would I depict Joseph as an older gray-haired man married to a woman perhaps who was still in her teen years? Well, there's two main reasons for that. One is, I'm an older gray-haired man, so I'm not going to try and depict myself as a 20-year-old cowboy. The other more important one in one sense is that historically, for hundreds of years, and still in some societies today, younger women are married to older men because the older man has the financial capability to sustain uh, a wife and family. Also, if there was a bride price or a dowry, it's sometimes called, that needed to be paid from the groom to the bride's family, an older man was more likely to have the money that the bride's family was interested in than a younger man. So there were some financial things involved there as well. So that's why in this particular play, Mary is going to be married to an older man, Joseph. You are involved with me in retelling this story set in Texas now in a time before automobiles and before hospitals. I call it Joe's First Christmas, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name's Don Moore. And I'm preparing to shoot the scenes of a little one act play, a one man play about the birth of Jesus, that Christmas story that we all enjoy. I think you're going to enjoy this because it's set in Texas in a time before automobiles and hospitals. And Joe is an older man married to a younger woman. And they have an appointment with Jesus in the town of Brownwood, Texas. Now, this is not Israel of 2,000 years ago, but we're trying to bring this a little closer to home. I think you're going to enjoy a different uh, scenery and a different take on the first story, the story of the birth of Jesus. And we call it Joe's First Christmas. Come on, get up, you miserable excuse for a burrow. Ugh. Okay, Mary Beth, I tell you what, you kick him in the rear end and I'm going to pull. We're going to try and get this uh, jug headed piece of junk on his feet. Come on here. Come on. Uh, uh, God damn it. I knew that that double dealing donkey trader was lying to me. I should have looked this burrow in the mouth. I trusted him. He told me this was a, a young creature. Well, Mary Beth, I'm telling you, this burrow was an eyewitness to the creation. Well, Mr. Burrow, I'm going over here and I'm getting me uh, a fence post and I'll tell you what Mr. Burrow you're either gonna get up or you're gonna go down for good what calm down Mary Beth well what makes you think I'm mad anyway 
Well, I am a little bit touchy, but now, Mary Beth, wouldn't you agree with me that the last few months have been just a little strange? I mean, I know they've been hard on you, hon, but my nerves are about shot too. I, I mean, think about it. There we were, preparing to get married. Everything seemed perfect till you turned up pregnant. I know, I know now, honey, it was the Holy Spirit, but you gotta admit, that story seemed a little thin to my folks and me when we first heard it. I mean, my mama liked to have herself a conniption fit when I told her, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, Mary Beth. I'm just saying that your reputation was not exactly immaculate in town in those days. I, I know, that, don't cry, honey, don't cry. I'm just saying it's been hard on all of us. I mean, I still remember there I was laying in my own bed, sound asleep, and all of a sudden I'm aware that there is a bright light in my room. I look up to see a big sucker standing at the foot of my bed. I mean, he was taller than I am on horseback. I'm looking for something to protect myself. And then he says, Joe, God sent me. Don't be afraid. I ain't here to hurt you. If I was, could have done it already. I'm still wondering, how does this fellow know my name? What's he doing in my bedroom? When he says, Joe, Mary Beth is carrying God's baby and he's trusting you to protect her and to raise that boy right. Y'all call his name Jesus because he's gonna be the savior of the world. By the way, Joe, I've cleared it with your parents. It's okay for you to marry Mary Beth. I got thinking about what he said about marrying you and I sure was glad he said that because I sure do love you. Oh, shucks. Just tell you what, we have got to make tracks to Brownwood. Can you believe that the governor would call for a census this time of year? I mean, they're already taxing us to death. Okay, okay, we got to get to Brownwood. Let's go. Come on, get in. No, a contraction. A contraction? Mary Beth, look around. This is no place for a contraction. We're 20 miles from nowhere. I know you didn't cause it. I'm just saying it's not going to happen here, okay? Now you find a place to sit down and just relax, honey. Relax. You know, keep this to yourself. You can do it, babe. I'm going to tie up this poor excuse for transportation. I'll be I'll be right back, okay? <clears throat> um, God, this is Joe. You know, the one that married Mary Beth so I could take care of your boy. Well, I don't mean to horn in or nothing, but, uh, you know, this is no place for a baby to be born. I mean, if he was my boy, if you get my drift, I think I'd find some place with shelter for the mother and the baby instead of them being born in the middle of nowhere. Well, <clears throat> not that I've had much to say about it so far. Mary Beth, how you doing? You feeling better? You feel like you can travel? Oh, I, I was just having a little heart to heart with the Lord, you know, praying. Uh, yeah, can you travel? At our girl, let's get you up. Come on. Ugh. Let's get you on this burrow. We got to make tracks to Brownwood. Come on, get in. Let's go. Several hours later in the town of Brownwood. Yes, Mary Beth, I asked at the hotel. Yes, I went to the boarding house. Mary Beth, I have been to every place in Brownwood twice. And I'm telling you, there is no room for us inside in town. That's why I accepted this. I know, I know it's outside, but Mary Beth, it's under a big old tree. It's gonna help shade us from the sun and even knock off a little rain if it falls. It's a little feedlot here that this sod buster here on the edge of town invited us to stay at. He said we could even stay several days if we need to. I mean, look, Mary Beth, we got some straw here. We got some blankets, I mean, I know it's not what you were expecting, honey, but I tell you what, just sit down. Let me go get uh, our supplies off the burrow and, and you just try and take it easy, okay? We can make this work. Whoa, God, this is Joe again. I really mean to be telling you your business, but seems to me if that boy that's on his way over there is who you say he is, you could have found him better accommodations than this. I mean. Being born in this type of situation out under a tree somewhere, you know, he could spend his whole life, maybe even die trying to convince people he's your boy. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I see it. But, you know, I just wonder, you ever do anything the easy way? How you doing, Mary Beth? That a girl, that's the spirit. Yeah, we're gonna make this work. I tell you what, this 
We got this uh, nice little woods around us here. And look, you can even see those stars up through the, the branches there. Well, one of them's real bright, isn't it? Yeah, I tell you what, I got the supplies. I am not used to walking this far, so I'm gonna take me a little shut eye. You need the rest. Then I'm gonna rustle this up some grub, okay? So you just take it easy there. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna get me a few winks here and then we'll get something to eat. All right. Oh, oh, what was that? Oh. Mayor Beth, are you, are you okay? Oh, good, well, baby's coming. We'll get the baby's coming. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do now? I tell you what, let's see. I get some hot water, that's what I'll do. I'll heat, I'll heat some water. Uh, why hot water? I don't know, it just seems like a woman always needs some hot water. Now, Mary Beth, I tell you what, this makes me a little shaky inside, so, you know, I've, ne I've seen many a cow calf, but uh, I've not been up close and personal to a uh, human baby being born, so you're gonna have to help me. I, well, I know I'm gonna help you, but, I mean, you gotta give me some pointers here, okay? And then I'll do the best I can. Lord have mercy, I wish we had us a midwife, and I wish I was somewhere else. Now, I just was telling myself it's going to be okay. We're going to make this work. We're used to making do with what we have, okay? Several hours later. Mary Beth, it's been a long road. You're doing great. I'll tell you what. We're almost at the end of the trail here, I believe. I think one more push is going to do it. Yes, if you can do it one more time. I think one more push is going to do it. There you go. Okay, come on, Mary Beth. Come on. I got it. I got him. Oh, there he is. Look at that. My goodness gracious. Oh, woo wee. He is beautiful, Mary Beth. And so are you. Yes, sir, Rebob. Get him wiped off here a little bit. My goodness. Uh, I tell you what. Look at him, Mary Beth. He's perfect. Yes, he is. Woo. Oh, boy. It's good to have you. And Mary Beth, I think he's looking for you. Wow. You know, this is. This is amazing. Uh, you know, I've, you women folk usually take care of all this baby birthing stuff. And I mean, to see it with my own eyes, there's the baby, there's you, there's this blood and, and stuff. And whoo, I mean, I feel a little, uh, a little light in the head here, honey. I think I, I think I better take it easy before. Whoa, what happened there? Whoo, what was that? <laughs> well, I guess a little too much excitement for this old cowboy. How you doing, honey? Well, I tell you what, you got him a little something to eat there. Let me take him. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, Mary, you get some sleep. I'm gonna see if that, I can kind of rock this little guy to get some shut eye here. And uh, that's all right now. You be quiet, shh, baby. Little guy, don't you cry. Mama's sleeping close by. Yeah, she's right there. Oh, shh. Let's see. <clears throat> a lot of people would sing a lullaby. What would that sound like? Okay. Hmm. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama sleeps close by. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama sleeps close by. Shh. I'm your father. You're my son. And yet, you're not mine at all. Your real father is a Lord above. You'll answer his higher call. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama sleeps close by. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Shh, mama sleeps close by. Laid in a manger to sin, you're a stranger. And yet, it's for sin you will die. Came down from heaven, Emmanuel. God loves you. <laughs> so do I. Hush, attaboy, attaboy. Mama's right close by. 
Attaboy. Shh. Well, look at here. We got some riders coming on by. They, boy, they even got a mule train with them. Oh, they're pulling up here. Well, howdy. Where y'all from? Oh, well, you've been on the trail a while then, haven't you? Who'd you come to see? Oh, really? Well, y'all crawl on down. I'll make some introductions here. Just a minute. Mary Beth, Mary Beth, wake up. Wake up, Mary Beth. I know, I know you need to sleep, but there's some people here you want to meet. I don't rightly know their name, but uh, you'll want to you'll want to meet them. They've been on the trail a long time, and they got a string of pack mules. They say loaded with presents for the the newborn king. Reckon they're talking about our boy, huh? What do you think about that? Okay, you gents come on over here and uh, let me introduce you. <clears throat> this here is Mary Beth, my wife, and Mary Beth. These boys say that uh, that bright star up there. Led them all the way from, uh, I believe it was Virginia and, and Massachusetts and uh, Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah, that's something, isn't it? And uh, they say they're here to meet the new king. Well, boys, this is Jesus. And uh, Mary, you take him. Here you go. Now, you folks come on over here and pay your respects. And uh, Mary, Beth, I'm just, I'll be right over here. I'm just going to look at these magnificent horses and this, this uh, fancy tack that they're riding. Well, Lord, this is Joe again. Should have known you were going to pull it off like you said you would. I heard you've done some outlandish things, but I do believe this beats them all. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't think I'd have seen it, believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. <clears throat> Although I got a suspicion I'm going to have to learn to trust you for some things I can't see with my own eyes. You know, Lord, I don't always get it right, but you seem to find a way to use me. I sure do appreciate that. I got to think about what you said about that little boy over there and being the savior of the world. And You know, I look up my own life and I realize that more than more money, better learning, better laws, better leaders, we sure do need a savior. Well, God, I, I ain't too good with words, but thanks for letting me be a part of this. And I sure thank you for Mary Beth. She's a mighty fine woman. Lord, more than anything, I thank you for the sun. And I thank you for watching Joe's First Christmas. Of his love.